Can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Can you see me? You can? We're live right now? All right, all right, I got it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our broadcast tonight from the beach, baby. I couldn't stand those four walls anymore, and I just had to break out and go somewhere completely different. So I asked Gerald, I said, Gerald, could we broadcast from the beach? And he said, well, I've got to work. And I said, well, could I broadcast from the beach? And he said, let me see if I can make that happen. And sure enough, Gerald came through. If you can see me, then Gerald came through. Great job, Gerald and Bobby. Appreciate you guys back there work, working this out for us. So here we are at the beach. And I thought it would be great for me to see this beautiful scenery and to feel the wind and to hear the waves. But then I thought it would be great for you to see it too. Because look at this tranquil environment. You've had enough stress in your life. You've had a busy week. And how about we just soak in God's creation. Listen to these waves behind me. This is just awesome. Listen to this. Makes me want to go to sleep. Get a hammock out here and just go to sleep. But you know, I can't wait to dip my feet and walk, on the, and to walk in the water. And I mean, I love doing that at night, just to take a nice, uh, nice walk on the beach at night, get my feet in the water and really enjoy it. I'm looking forward to doing some of that. Hey, tonight we're starting a brand new study and we're calling it Breaking Out. And when you think of breaking out, you may think of someone in prison who's breaking out of jail. And that, that's a good analogy. That's a good visual. But when I'm thinking about breaking out, I'm thinking of an athlete who's had an average mundane season, and then all of a sudden something clicks, and they have a breakout game. And one breakout game turns into two, and two turns into three, and now they've got some momentum, and then it turns out to a a great season for them, which becomes a great career. Once they broke out, they were able to go big and they just kept going. You know, once they got out of their tough times and they were able to break out, everything changed for the better. See what I did there? Once they got past the tough times and they broke out, everything got a lot better. And so we're going to be looking at some stories in God's Word about people who went through difficulties, yes, but then God got them through on the other side, and once things got going, man, their life just took off, and their life with God was amazing. And we're going we're to see some encouragement that once we get past this tough time that we're in, that God is going to break us out, and we're going to go, go, and it's going to be an unbelievably great life as we walk with Christ. And our story that we're going to start with today, and we're going to do it for the next couple of weeks, is the story of Jonah. And Jonah is a great story to look at about someone who went through a tough time and broke out. And we're going to see that in the pages of, of God's Word. Now, when you think of Jonah and the whale, I bet you guys think of the same thing that I do. So I asked one of the kids at Parkway to draw me a picture of what Jonah means to them. And I didn't give any prompts. I didn't say anything about a whale or anything. So this picture right here is from Amelia Patterson. She is five and a half years old, and Amelia drew me a picture of Jonah and the whale. And you see that? That is a beautiful picture. Thank you, Amelia, for drawing that for us. And look at the top. You see the boat that's up on top of the water? Probably the boat that Jonah got thrown out of. But we'll talk about that on a, on a later week. Down at the bottom, you've got a, a really cute octopus on one side. And I love over here the starfish on the bottom, which, by the way, they've changed the name. It's no longer starfish. The scientists say it is now sea star. But this is a perfectly great picture of what Jonah means to most people. It's Jonah in the whale. So thank you, Amelia, for that beautiful picture of Jonah and the whale. But you know, folks, there's more to the story than just Jonah and the whale. That's, a, that's part of it, and that's the middle of it. But there is some great parts to the story of Jonah if you just dig in a little bit and you kind of dig in deeper, you'll realize that Jonah's not even the star. He's not even the main character. The whale's not the main character either, but God is the main character to the story. And as you see it unfold, the main part of the story is God's love for the people of Nineveh. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. But so today we're going to start with Jonah chapter 1, and we're going to 
We're going to dig into Jonah, and I think you're going to be surprised at some of the things that you find in the book that's going to be a real blessing to you. So if you have your Bible, and I hope that you will, or you can take your phone and get out your Bible app and go to Jonah chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. Let's dive in, and let's see what God says to us today. Verse 1 says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, who was the son of Amittai. And he said, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord, and he headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship that was bound for that port. And after paying the fare, he went aboard and he sailed for Tarshish to flee from God. So the first thing that I would like to know is when I read that the word of the Lord came to Jonah is who was Jonah? Why was God speaking to him and had God heard from him before? And there's nothing in this book that really tells us other than his dad's name that he was the son of Amittai but nothing else tells us about Jonah. But did you know that there's another verse in the Bible that talks about Jonah? That it gives us some insight to what Jonah, who he was and what his job was. If you flip back to 2 Kings chapter 14, it, it gives us some descriptions of who Jonah was. And some people would say, why is the Bible so redundant when it talks about the same person in multiple places? And I would say, it's not redundant. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's very enlightening for me to have some information from 2 Kings chapter 14. Because listen to what it says about Jonah. It's talking about King Jeroboam of Israel. And it says that he, that's talking about Jeroboam, he was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel from Lebo and Hamath to the Sea of the Arabah in accordance with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, who spoke through his servant Jonah who was the son of Amittai, he was a prophet from gath Hefer. So Jonah was a prophet. So Jonah had already heard from God before. He was going to the king, and he was proclaiming God's word to the king. And he was proclaiming. So we know right here that Jonah is a prophet of God. He's heard from God before, and he's in Israel, because that's where King Jeroboam was. And so he's in Israel and he's going around being the prophet of God. Now, here's some things to know about that. That means that he was very well liked. Everyone loved Jonah because he was giving them great news from God. And everybody loves to hear great news, right? Israel was going through some really great times in their life. Their economy was exploding. They had been really depressed. They had, they had been going through a recession. And all of a sudden, they, they were, like we read in 2 Kings that they gained some territories back that they had lost, and that brought prosperity to them. They opened up brand new trade routes, which brought in a lot of, a lot of money, and the economy was booming. And so, so Jonah's there giving them great news, saying the tough times are over, that God is going to break us out, and we're going to have these incredible you know, successes in our businesses, and we're going to have this great boom in Israel that's going to be coming. And so... And so Jonah gets to be popular because he's giving them the great news. And this kind of reminds me of where we are in America today. We are going through some difficult economic times. And we've got some, some repression going on. And there are people out of work. And there are people who are struggling to pay their bills. But just like that, Jonah was coming saying that the tough times are almost over. That things are about to be really, really great almost like in America. We feel like we're right on the tip of things just booming again, and we're, we're right, in, right, at the, right at the verge of things opening up again, and things are going to get great really soon. But hey, let's don't rush it. Let's don't jump ahead of ourselves and rush into the recovery before it's time. Let's just be patient and do it in a, in a, in a wise way so that we can enjoy the prosperity when God brings it. And so Jonah is telling them, man, things are going to be great. And because of that, he was very, very popular. Jonah was also more than popular. Um, he was also wealthy. We know that from Jonah that, that he, was, he had money to go down and, and board a ship. It said he paid a fare. So 
he had some money there, and he was also popular. So that's who Jonah was. And so the question is, you know, Jonah's life was very, very comfortable. He liked being in Israel. He liked being the prophet. Everything was going good for Jonah at that time. And all of a sudden, God spoke to him and asked him to do something. God interrupted what his plans were and asked Jonah to do something. We don't like to be interrupted. I remember when my kids were little, they used to come up to, my, to me and Heather and be, Mama, 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 Mama. And you kind of like, just a minute. They would do, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And, and they would just over and over again constantly want my attention. And I, I got a little frustrated. I'm like, look, look, the football game is on, Okay. Can we talk about that in a minute? Can we talk about just what happened in the bathroom in a minute? I, we're, it's first and ten on the three, all right? Can we finish the game? I need to watch this part of the game. But the kids were trying to interrupt me, and we don't like being interrupted. And here's why. Because what we're doing at that moment, we've put value to. And we've decided that this is valuable to me because I've decided to do it over anything else. I could have done... 15 other things, but I've decided to do this one thing. So it's valuable to me. And when an interruption comes, it frustrates us because we're like, don't pull me away from something that's valuable because Auburn is first and 10 on the three. And I got to see how this turns out. This can wait because I need to see how this is going to turn out. And so Jonah is being interrupted and he didn't like it. He didn't like it because he had other plans. And God is coming in asking him to do something and he has no desire to do. And for him, it's a giant interruption into what he's going to be doing. Let's look and see what the ask is. The ask is, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the interruption, and then here's the ask. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Now, who who are the people that live in Nineveh? By the way, before I get to that, funny story. When we first moved to Tennessee, uh, my kids came, came to Sunday school. and about, We were about here about a year, and the kids came home from Sunday school, and we always like to ask our kids, what did you learn in Sunday school? And one of my kids, and I can't remember which one, and they would, be, they would be mad at me if I told you anyway, but let's just say one of my kids said, well, we learned about Jonah. And I said, really? Okay, great. What did Jonah do? And they said, well, after he got out of the fish, he went to Nineveh. And I said... He went where? And they said, he went to Nineveh. And I said, no, I don't think he went to Nineveh. And they said, yes, he did. That's what the teacher said. He got out of the fish, and he went to Nineveh. And I said, no, no, Nineveh's not in that story. And they said, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I said, "Uh, he got out of the fish, and he went to Nineveh. He didn't go to Nineveh. And I realized immediately that Tennessee was, was in our future. How we talk in Tennessee was a little bit different than how we talked in Florida. But you know what? Nineveh sounds just fine to me right now. I've gotten used to it. I'll probably say Nineveh here in just a second. But that's where God told Jonah to go. Go to Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to go, and here's why. The people who live in the city of Nineveh, they're the Assyrians. 100%. The whole city was full of Assyrians. And the Israelites and the Assyrians hated each other. Jonah hated them. He didn't dislike them. He hated them. And God's saying, go and tell them about me and save them. Save them. He would just assume them die right where they were. He had a prejudice against the people of Assyria because Assyrians had come in and taken over cities in Israel. And then Israel took some back and the Assyrians came in and they were merciless killers. They were terrible people who would They would come and surround a city and they would just starve you to death where you had no food and water for weeks and weeks and months. They would just starve you out. They were so brutal that they would take everyone at the city living outside the wall. They would cut their heads off. They would lob them over the city gates so that you had the heads of your friends laying around the city streets as you had to go about your day. The Assyrians were horrible. Scholars think that that the Assyrians attacked Jonah's hometown, that they came in and they destroyed his hometown, possibly while he was living there, which means that Jonah would have been there and watched his friends and his family murdered by the Assyrians. And God is saying, I want you to go to Nineveh 
And when he said that, the hair on the back of Jonah's head stood up. And he was like, to where? You want me to go to Nineveh? But God is asking him a huge thing. He's saying, Jonah, I want you to leave Israel where you're popular. And I want you to give up your popularity. And I want you to go to a city that's going to hate you. Because you're going to give them bad news. And nobody likes to hear bad news. You're going to give up your popularity and you're going to go where they're going to hate you. Oh, and by the way, I don't know when you're going to come back. Because after the story of Jonah, we don't know what happened to him. We don't know if he ever came back. And so he's saying, you may never come back to the land where all of your friends and your family. And by the way, that status that you have as the prophet of the living God, where everyone loves the living God, you can forget that. Because you're going to go to a place where they don't love me. You're going to go to a place where they hate me and they reject me and so they're going to reject you as well. And so you're not going to have any status. You're going to have to leave the land that you love and you're going to have to go to a place where they're not even going to want you to be there. And so God has had this interruption in Jonah's life. But listen, what's, there's a difference between an interruption and an invitation. Let me explain what that is. If God is speaking to you and he says, hey, hey, and he's trying to get your attention, hey, 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 and sometimes God will stop saying, hey, because you're not listening, and he will thump you on the head and say, hey, I'm talking to you. And when he does that, is it an, an interruption or an invitation? An interruption is, it's when what you're doing is more important than what he's saying. That's an interruption. He's bothering you. What I've got going on right now is more important than what he's asking me to do. But if, he, if what he's asking me is more important than what I'm doing, that's not an interruption. That is an invitation to be a part of something even more important. And so God is asking Jonah. He's, he's inviting him to be a part of something that's bigger than Jonah's ever known before. He says, yeah, okay, you've been in Israel and you've talked to the people already who love me. Let's try this. You're going to go to a land where they despise you and you're going to go be a part of one of the biggest stories in the entire Old Testament. God's about to do something huge and he is inviting Jonah to come be a part of it. Is that an inconvenience? Is that worth sacrificing for? I bet Jonah... He had no idea that what God was asking him to do was so great. It's going to be written in a book, and we're going to read about it thousands of years later. That any kid in America that, that's heard the story of Jonah can, can draw a picture of it. Because they know what happened to Jonah because he's that important to what God did through history. He had no idea that that's what God was inviting him to. And what seemed like an interruption at the beginning was really an opportunity for Jonah to have a significant life. He was telling him, your life is going to be so significant because what I'm going to do through you. But Jonah thought that was too much to give up. He couldn't think about giving up the status. He couldn't think about giving up the money. He couldn't think about leaving the comfort level that he was at. And so Jonah decided to say no and he ran from God. So I'm wondering if today, is it possible that God is using this time, this, this, uh, this shutdown of everything, this, this virus that's running rampant, the, the fear and the anxiety that's in the air, maybe God's using that to interrupt your life. Maybe your everyday schedule is completely different. Maybe the things that you used to do they're not there anymore. And so all of a sudden, your life is turned upside down. And I wonder if maybe God might be using this time as an interruption to your normal schedule to get your attention where God would say, hey, hey, I'm talking to you. Hey, look over here at me. You've forgotten me. You stopped talking to me. You stopped listening to me. Hey, hey, and maybe God even will thump you on the head. Maybe last week, the week before, maybe this week. God's trying to get your attention to say, I'm not interrupting you. I'm inviting you to be a part of something huge for your life. I'm inviting you to be a part of something 
even bigger than you can possibly imagine. He's inviting you to a life of significance if you would just listen and obey. But are you willing to give up what it takes to be a follower of Christ? Are you willing to give up what it takes to to say yes to him instead of turning and running like Jonah did? Are you willing to give up your status to say it doesn't matter what people think of me? It doesn't matter if my friends understand why I keep talking to them about church and Jesus and relationship. I'm, you don't worry about what your, what your co-workers think or what your family thinks because you're, you're always talking about your, what God's doing in your life and you give up the status of people liking you. You give up the right to be liked. God's calling all of us to do that. He's not concerned with how much people love you and how much they like you. He's concerned with you being significant for his work and you being listening and following where he leads you. Maybe he's going to ask you to give up a prejudice you have. Jonah had a prejudice against the Assyrian people, and because of that, he refused to go to them and share God's word. And maybe God would reveal to you tonight, you know what? The reason you can't be effective sharing the love of God is because you don't love the people you're sharing with, that you have resentment in your heart. Or maybe there's a, a relationship in your life that is broken, and you can't share God's love because, because there's resentment in your heart and there's a prejudice there against somebody for some reason. And that's going to prevent you from saying yes to God. I'm not sure what, what it is that would keep you from saying yes to God, but maybe God's bringing it to your mind right now. And even as I'm saying this, the Holy Spirit is bringing to your heart whatever obstacle, whatever obstacle might be in your life for you to say Yes to God. What are you willing to do? God is interrupting you today. He's given you an opportunity and an invitation to come be a part of His story for your life. Are you going to be like Jonah? Are you going to run away and say, that's too much? I just can't do that. Or are you willing to say yes to God today? Say yes to Him now. And watch Him do amazing things starting today and tomorrow and the next day. God's inviting you. How are you going to respond? Would you pray with me for just a minute? Let's just bow where we are. And wherever you find yourself, whether it's in a beautiful location or just in the room at your house, and let's just bow and talk to God for a moment. Father God, I just prayed in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you that you are here, there, and everywhere. You are you are all around us. You are in our hearts, in our lives, and in our minds right now. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak to us in a real and powerful way. God, I, I just have to confess to you, Lord, that sometimes I'm like Jonah. I like it comfortable. I like it safe. I like it predictable. And I like to be liked. But today, God, I come and I surrender that to you and say, God, I will go where you will tell me to go. And I will say what you want me to say. Whatever the consequences, good, bad, whatever it is you have for me, God, I surrender. And I pray that right now, God, that other people are praying that same prayer, Lord. That they would be saying to you, Lord, that whatever it is, we surrender to it right now. We surrender to you without hesitation, without reservation. Speak to us, God, about what you have for us where you want us to go, who you want us to talk to, what you want us to say, and give us the courage to say yes. Yes, God, yes. That's what I'll do. That's where I'll go. Just go with me. That's all I ask, God, that you go with me and everything will be fine. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So excited that you joined us for our broadcast today. Join in next week as we're going to continue looking at the life of Jonah. And we're going to watch as God walked him through this surrendering process. And how on the other side, thousands upon thousands of lives were changed because he said yes to God. I hope that you'll say yes to him this week and that you'll join us Sunday at 1030 uh, for our broadcast right here on Facebook Live of our church services.
and then right back here on Wednesday night. What's that? Oh, I'm going to go join this volleyball game. You guys have a great week. Love you, and we'll see you next week. Be blessed.